3D printer designs are starting to get more complex every day. You're seeing multiple independent Z motors, tool changers, and multi-extruder setups are becoming more and more common. To help support the features that these new designs require, you're starting to see more robust controller boards out on the market. One of those is the Big Tree Tech Octopus board. This board supports up to eight stepper drivers and a plethora of other features. So let's take a look at it. So the first thing I want to acknowledge is that this board was sent to me by Big Tree Tech for review and evaluation. The words and opinions in this review are my own. I haven't been paid to say anything. They simply just provided me the board. Now this is a recent thing with controller boards and I'm really starting to like this. First notice this with the spider board is that packaging for these controller boards is getting better. We're no longer seeing the generic brown cardboard box that's half crushed. We're actually seeing proper packaging for these boards. There really isn't much to the box itself. This is the 1.1 revision of the Octopus. If I'm not mistaken, it corrected some silk screening issues on the original V1.0 version. Okay, let's open up the box. We have our Big Tree Tech business card, a USB-C cable, our Big Tree Tech rubber ducky, and the controller board itself. Now this unit did not come with stepper drivers. I will be using TMC2209 drivers, but this board does support the common step stick drivers that most of us use. So open up the package and take a look at the board. And there are some jumpers pre-installed as well. We're gonna have to switch some of these around to configure this to suit our needs. So looking at the board, it is very well built. It does feel very solid. The soldering is very good. There's a little bit of residue from cleaning the solder off during the flow, but all in all, the board does feel very well built. This is actually the second board I have. I already have one pre-installed and I did go through that one thoroughly. I couldn't find anything wrong with the board. So we'll start on the left of the board and we'll work our way around in a clockwise direction, just taking a look at everything. Now starting off, we do have our 24 volt in and bed out. And this board is arranged a little bit differently than most. You'll see that it actually has motor power board power and bed power separate. So what this means is you need to feed three separate VIN in to power this board. And then we also have our bed out here. Now having board power and bed power separate is common on a lot of boards. However, having stepper motor power separate does have its advantages. What that means is you can run your stepper motors at a higher voltage than your controller board for increased performance. Steppers perform better at higher voltages. Now, unfortunately though, this board only includes 35 volt caps. So that means if you do wanna run your stepper drivers at a higher voltage, you are limited by that 35 volt cap. Stepper drivers like the 5160s can handle those higher voltages and you do get much more performance out of them with the higher voltage. So while having a separate motor in voltage, is a nice feature because of these 35 volt caps you're really only going to be limited to i believe it's 32 volt is the common power supply in that size range that should be able to use max now next we have our eight stepper driver slots now as you can see here they are labeled a little bit differently on most controller boards you'll see your x y z and then all the extra ones are labeled extruder that nomenclature is pretty common however i'm happy to see board manufacturers starting to move away from that simply for the fact that printers now don't really conform to that standard. Um, it's nice to just be numbered because when you're going through your configuration setup, it's all just pins anyways. Like what it says for stepper Z on your board isn't stepper Z, it, it's pin PB7 or whatever. So it is nice to see that these are labeled motor zero to seven. Now motor two is split. So if you are running a setup with two Z motors that are tied together, you can use this. This is common for traditional Z setups on uh, such as a Prusa Mark III, for example. However, you have eight motors here. Most modern firmware supports some form of gantry tramming. You're gonna wanna run your Z motors independently. So this will be installed in my Voron 2.4, the tall boy. So in my case, I will have A, B motors, an extruder motor, and then four Z motors. You do have jumpers as well for configuring UART or SBI depending on the stepper driver you are installing. Over on this end, we do have a connection for a TFT display, BL touch hookup. We have our USB-C connector. And I believe this is only running at USB 2.0 speeds. It just is a USB-C connector itself. I really like these USB-C connectors because they are reversible and more robust than the micro USBs. Behind that, we have two IC connections. And then also we have a UART connection back here with these pins. We have our flash card port. 
We have two expansion ports. This is for your traditional rep wrap graphical display. We have a CAN connector here. Now, I do run Clipper. At this time, uh, CAN bus connectors are not supported on the board itself. They have to go through the Raspberry Pi through a USB connection first. However, in the future, if CAN bus would be supported by Clipper, this board does have a built-in CAN bus. Also, this board does support Marlin, and I believe there will be a future revision of this board that will support RepRap firmware. So this port right now isn't quite useful, but in the future, depending on software updates, may be more practical. We have our thermistors here, and we have multiple thermistor inputs because we have multiple heaters. We have four heaters for this board plus the bed. So we have one thermistor for the bed and then four for the hot end. It does have a full size USB here. I believe this is for Marlin if you wanted to plug in a USB stick for additional storage. We have our end stops and this has eight end stops. It has two each for X, Y, Z and then two filament end stops. So you have eight configurable end stops. Down here too, we do have a sensor pin. Now this sensor pin is for inductive probes and based on the settings of this one jumper here, it can be fed either five, 12 or 24 volt and it is protected. So for the common 24 volt bed probes that the Vorons use, you can plug it directly in here, not using the BAT85 diode because the board is protected. However, I do wanna make a note. With these Omron style probes um, that are commonly used with Vorons off AliExpress, because there's a voltage drop with these or something else with the voltage, this sensor pin does not work, unfortunately. It does not detect when the probe is activated. So if you're using these style of probes and it is not working with this, you will have to use the BAT85 diode and plug the sense pin into one of the free end stops instead of plugging all three wires into the sensor port. Um, this isn't really called out great in the documentation. It's kind of hard to figure out what exactly is going on there. Some users report it works okay. I myself, I tried two different probes, multiple different setups and configuration. I could not get the probe to work with the dedicated sensor pin. So if you are running into issues with an inductive probe, you may have to hook it up more traditional methods through a end stop. Next to our end stops, we have our fans. And this thing has a lot of fans. You have six controllable fans that have voltage selectors for either 5, 12, or 24 volts. So you can run up to six controllable fans with controllable voltages, and then two always on fans at again, controllable voltages, either 5, 12, or 24. This little three pin connector here is for our RGB LED control. Up here, we have our Raspberry Pi connector. If we do want to power a Raspberry Pi off of this board, and then also we have uh, a power detector port for power loss recovery with an add-on board and also a power on for remotely controlling power to the printer with certain firmwares. As you can see, we do have replaceable fuses as well for our voltage in. And that is it for the main features of the board itself. So let's go ahead and get this installed in the printer, hooked up and get it running. Now the installation of this board was rather straightforward and very simple. If you've ever installed an SKR type board before, it's pretty much the same process, only the board's a little bit bigger. Now to make the installation even easier, I used a pre-made wire loom provided to me from Lineo. These pre-made wire looms definitely make the installation and wiring of your Voron build much, much more simpler. You're no longer having to estimate wire lengths and crimp on all the terminals. It all comes pre-configured for the board of choice and the build size you are building. Now, I did have to do a few changes, such as adding some DuPont connectors for my Hall Effect end stop. And because my build is an oddball size, I had a little bit of extra wire once I was finished, but there's plenty of room under the hood and zip ties are very good at managing extra wires. So I do want to give a shout out for Lineo for providing this high quality pre-made wire loom for this build. It definitely sped up the installation. Now, when it comes to firmware, you guys know I like Clipper. So installing Clipper on here was pretty much the same as most SKR boards again. You're going to install the firmware via an SD card. You're going to flash the board. Now, because this is a newer board and there really is no default configuration for the V2.4, and my printer is a little bit of oddball size, I had to go through and make my own. To do that, it was quite simple. I started with the default config for a V2.4. In my case, I used the one from V226 here, which is running a Fizex Spider. All I did was adjust the pin mapping to match the pin mapping of the Big Tree Tech Octopus. And then I just referenced all my build size, end stop positions, Z offset from the original configuration from when this thing was running a Taco Raven. Put it all together, save, restart. It's good to print. 
I don't need to do any additional tuning because it's running Clipper. And for those that have run Clipper on multiple machines, you know that the controller board itself doesn't have a massive impact on the printer. So as long as your settings are the same, you can swap out a controller board, save your settings, and you can just continue printing. I haven't had to recalibrate anything on this printer. My Z offset's still good. My pressure advance values are still good. Nothing's really changed. So that's why I'm not gonna bring out any prints right now to show comparisons of before and after. With Clipper, a 32-bit controller board running modern TMC drivers, all are mostly the same. When it comes to choosing a controller board for your printer, you're pretty much gonna look at which controller board has the features you want, the support you want, the price you want, and the build quality you want. So this is freshly installed in my machine right now. I'm gonna be printing with it over the next coming couple of weeks. And then at that point, I will do a comparison video between the Big Tree Tech Octopus and the Fizex Spider that I have installed in my V226, my smaller V2.4. And we'll be able to do a comparison at that time if there is any long-term differences between these two boards. Because again, with Clipper, your controller board doesn't matter as much as some other firmwares. So overall, I am impressed with the board. The build quality is very good. It is a larger board than the Fizex Spider, but it does support a couple more extra features such as more fans and the additional motor in voltage. So it really comes down to what you're looking for in your build, what kind of features you need, and the price point you're willing to spend, along with other features such as manufacturing quality and availability. Hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Big Tree Tech Octopus board. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you want to help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, I do have a link in the description as well, along with an affiliate link for the Big Tree Tech Octopus. Purchasing it through the affiliate link will help support additional content. I hope you learned something new today, and as always, have yourself a great day. Cheers.